The NCAA Lacrosse Championship, it continues in Ithaca, New York. Sholkov Field, it's home to the two-time defending Ivy League regular season champs. The HC, the Cornell Big Red, they host one of the hottest teams of the nation. The Michigan Wolverines appearing in their first NCAA tournament ever. Second meeting between these two teams of all time is coming up. Here you go, this is our portion of the bracket. Cornell or Michigan will face the winner of the game following us, Duke or Delaware, later today. Brilliant games all weekend, and this one should be no exception. Glad that you are with us in Ithaca. He is Mark Dixon, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. I think when the bracket was revealed, a lot of folks looked at this game and said this might be one of the juiciest ones of the weekend. Yeah, without question. You got the Michigan Wolverines, winners of four straight, including playing their way into the NCAA tournament by winning the Big Ten Championship. Cornell, meanwhile, stumbled in the Ivy League, but they get a home game and they have got a brilliant offense. Yes, they do. And it's headlined by the Tawarton Award finalist, C.J. Kirst. He's been electric all year. <laughs> Terrific scorer and primarily left-handed. He's developed a right hand here in 2023. Such a dynamic Dodger, can play off of the ball. He will be a handful today for this Michigan Wolverine defense. You take a look at his numbers for the year. An amazing 2022. He's even been better so far in 2023. It's outstanding. The 63 goals, the best total in the nation. So how does Michigan counter? They have got two scorers that are absolutely phenomenal. Mikey Bain, incredible off ball with his feet set and a good look at the cage. One of the best shooters in the country. He's complimented by Josh Zawada, who came to Michigan as a pure scorer. He's upped his vision and his assist totals are tremendous for this Michigan Wolverine team. Yeah, Bayman Zawada, one and two in the Big Ten in points this year. Mark, critical news. The man on the right, Ryan Cohen, he has been Michigan's top feeder all season long. He is out today due to internal issues within the program. He's unavailable. That is huge news. It, it can't be overstated. Michigan is a three-headed monster on attack. They're down to a duo in Bame and Zawada. Cohen was moved to midfield primarily because of his shake and ability to move the defense, open up dodging lanes, passing lanes. He will be sorely missed today by the Wolverines. Who's the next man up? Who is going to step up to fill the void left by number 40? Yeah, that is critical. And Michigan has been preparing all week for Cornell, knowing that Cohen would be absent. Hey, two great offenses. Michigan led the Big Ten in points and goals per game. And meanwhile, Cornell is a top 10 offense in and of itself. So it's going to be a challenging day for the goalies. How about Hunter Taylor? You were in Baltimore last weekend, and you saw him turn in maybe his best 90 minutes of the season, helping spur Michigan to a Big Ten tournament title. Meanwhile, on the other side, Chase Erlin, one of the more consistent goalies in the country. Yeah, really tremendous goaltender. Chase got roughed up in their semifinal loss to Yale in the Ivy League tournament. Look for him to rebound today. And Hunter Taylor came in of relief of starter Shane Carr at halftime of the Penn State semifinal. Leads them to the Big Ten championship. We've got a heck of a ball game on tap. Rowlett, Cascaden, the two at X, and Michigan wins the faceoff to begin. First round action in Ithaca. It's the Wolverines' first appearance in its 12 years as a Division I program in the NCAA tournament. Cornell, they've been here 30 times. This yeah. is hey, nothing new. You talk about Michigan, only 12 years old. You can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't drive when you're that young, <laughs> and Michigan is making their first NCAA tournament appearance. That is an advantage that we're going to see Michigan have today, Kevin, at the faceoff dot with Justin Wheatfelt and Nick Rowlett. That can maybe mitigate the loss of Ryan Cohen to an extent. Look at this. Justin Brown got a close-range look immediately after a nice feed. Brown is going to have to be one of those players to step up in Ryan Cohen's absence. He had a great semifinal against Penn State, scored two goals. He's been very streaky this year, but his athleticism and speed can be a difference maker. Wow, speaking of speed, the velocity of that ball when it comes out of C.J. Curse cross is something impressive. And he is number 15 in the white, the nation's top goal scorer. Now, Tucker Dordovic may have caught him yesterday with his six-goal performance. However, I, 
I think Kirsch may be due for a few today, perhaps. He is being guarded by Andrew Darby, number 19 in the maize and blue. Darby did a great job last weekend on both T.J. Malone and Braden Irksa. C.J. Kirst, he's a different animal. Cornell hosting a first round matchup for a second straight year. It made the spirited run of the national title game a year ago. There's a low rip from Michael Long that's knocked away by Hunter Taylor. Both goaltenders have asserted themselves early. Erlin with the doorstop step on Justin Brown and that shot low with a lot of heat. Taylor's very good low and what I like about him is that he gets his body behind his stick. So in other words, he's just not making a stick save, but it's total position, great body control, and he makes his first stop. Well, you go back in time a week or two ago, you'd think maybe Shane Carr might be between the pipes, but Taylor turned in a impressive Big Ten tournament. There's the first goal of the game, and it's Michael Bame who rips it past Erlen. We just talked about it a couple minutes ago. Mikey Bame with that left hand. This is the equivalent of leaving a good mid-range shooter in the NBA open. That off-ball defense, because Bame doesn't need to get to the cup to make it count. He can beat you from 12 yards and out. Great feed, good catch, and that delivery is so smooth. 43 goals now for the junior from Rocky River, Ohio. Michigan had it momentarily. There is a, a man that you're gonna see quite a bit today. That's Gavin Adler, he's the captain of the defense. Comes up with that ground ball. The Tasmanian Devil, he's in the middle of everything. Top overall pick in this past week's PLL draft. The front runner for the Smizer Award given to the best defensive player in men's Division I lacrosse. He's special, he's tough, and he gives guys like me hope. He's only 5'8", <laughs> so I'm telling you, the guy is small, but he is tenacious and fun to watch. Boy, he has been more of a vocal presence as well. It's been a brilliant year. This is Kirst that's getting hounded. Look at Darby's positioning on Kirst. Great feet, great strength. There's a quick look and a strike. Andrew Dalton with his eighth goal of the season. What a shot by Dalton. The gunslinging shot. Watch it from the hip. Pew! And just pastes the upper 90. Takes, takes Taylor on the elevator. Starts low, finishes high. And Connor Busick loves a good rip. Boy, not much you could do there for Taylor. A brilliant look. Dalton, the junior from Toronto, has been much more healthy the last couple of weeks after missing some time in April. It wasn't long ago, Busick was on this field playing in the NCAA tournament for Cornell. All-American helped this team reach the title game and reach championship weekend, I should say, in 2013. An incredible player here, one of the best ever to wear a big Wren uniform. His defensive coordinator, Jordan Stevens, a teammate of his, during their time here in Ithaca, one of the, not just one of the best young coaching staffs in the country, because when you haven't even hit 30 years old, there's a tendency to say that. One of the best coaching staffs in the country, period. Go to the national title game even before the age of 30. That's impressive. Erlin was able to sweep that one away, and Cornell is quick to clear it. This is Michael Bozzi, lets it fly. Big Red back it up. Love the athleticism of both of these teams short stick defensive midfield and they've got the green light to take it to the rack when opportunity presents itself I mean you look at this game on paper and you look at the body of work we've seen some incredible games so far this weekend the, the shootout at DC yesterday and that one in College Park Army and Maryland very high scoring I think this game is going to match those two in terms of total goals between these two teams what well, was it? Six of the eight teams in action yesterday. 15 or more goals. Both of these offenses have been brilliant. 
Cornell, a top 10 offense. There's a rip and a score. Hugh Kelleher puts one past Taylor. Nothing fancy. The hard hat defines this program at Cornell. Just a split dodge from right to right. Might even call it a bull dodge. And then the hammer to the far post, stick side high. Cornell's both of their goals, the shooters start low. That's where the goalie's eyes go. He might dip a little bit. And then they quickly change levels. And they're painting corners on their first two tallies. Yeah, having that low to high shot in the arsenal, extremely important. We talked about the face-off battle that we are going to see today. That duo, as you mentioned, we felt Rowlett for Michigan. Arguably the best in the country. We felt no one has a better face-off percentage than he does. And not only are they great face-off men, they're really good lacrosse players. And what I mean by that is when you talk about the Fogos, F-O-G-O, face-off, get off. It's because face-off guys have gotten a reputation of being unathletic and not good lacrosse players. We felt Rowlett, do they break that mold. Again, Michigan playing today without Ryan Cohen. Perhaps our most valuable feeder. He's led this team in assists all year. He is out today for Michigan. Justin Brown, number one in the maize and blue, is his replacement. Again, streaky and inconsistent in 2023, but when he gets a head of steam, it's like a sprinter out of a starting block. I mean, his first burst is truly special. He was the shooting star last weekend in Baltimore, right? Had a couple of goals in that semifinal win against Penn State. And look at the respect that Cornell is paying to him. He gets a long pole matchup, which means when you're in the midfield, you get a long pole, you are a dodging threat. Isaac Aronson denied by Erlin. So a couple of saves for the senior from outside of Rochester. Well, we talked about Adler and what Cornell has to handle. What, what's vital for Michigan on this side of the field defensively? I think Darby has got to contain Kirst. Number 19 in the maize and blue has to contain number 15 in the red and white. And then the communication and the slides are going to have to be incredibly critical. Kelleher, he easily beat his matchup. The, the, the short stick defensive midfielders for Michigan have to do this. Funnel down the alley, get a good first touch, good approaches to try not to get beat one-on-one -on -one and let the slide packages take their take their place. It's been a in improving defense overall, you could say, the last couple of weeks for Michigan. Back behind the cage, this is Billy Coyle, gets a close range look, bounces it in, and it's three in a row for the Big Red. The Big Red Faithful waving the flag. How about the footwork of number 11 in white by Billy Coyle? I thought he was gonna go in the crease right there, but he not only does he stay out of the crease, he uses the pick, crosses up the defense, and the bouncer past Taylor has the Big Red up by a pair.
Cornell, the kings of the Ivy League the last couple of years, they've scored three in a row. A year ago, Mark, they made the spirited run to the national championship game. First, they take out Ohio State in the first round. Then they get the upset specialist, Delaware. They're able to knock them out in the quarters, run past Rutgers in the semis. But then it ran into the historic run uh, for these Maryland Terrapins who went unbeaten. 18-0. They were down big early in that game. They made a comeback bid, however, fell by two goals in the title game. It was a magical season in, in a year where Cornell and the lacrosse family lost their patriarch in Richie Moran. And it was not lost on Connor Busick and his players. Magical season. Oh, Michigan answers the three-goal run quickly. We already saw Bame score, and here's his counter, his running mate in a sense, Josh Sawada with his 33rd goal of the season. This is exactly what Michigan needed out of the break. Win forward, and that, there's the ball handling ability of the face-off men for the Michigan Wolverines. In this case, it's Wheatfelt. Gets down the field, clean pass to Zawada, the worm burner, the low-to-low -low shot that if you're a worm sticking your head out of a hole here on the turf, watch out, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. <laughs> What is that telling you, though? You've already referenced that. A lot of a lot of low shots that these goalies are seeing early. Wrist strength. And it, it, it's changing levels or staying low to low, high to high. Cornell changed levels twice. We've seen a couple of shots from the outside so far from Cornell be high to high and low to low. So they're mixing up their variety on early. Jason Singer scoops up that ground ball. So here comes Cornell. Think about it as, as a baseball pitcher. I mean, most of the time we see that kind of, that overhand delivery, but every now and again, you'll have that sidearm action or even the, the submarine. You don't see a whole lot of it, but it's just, imagine all three of those points of release in a lacrosse player's arsenal when he shoots. Nice save that time. Hunter Taylor tracked it. To your point, it's it's hard to prepare for if you don't see it that frequently. That's where tape comes in. Uh, you know, obviously, these two teams were heavy on Wolverine and Big Red footage when they found out their matchup on the selection show last Sunday. Michigan probably not in this game, if not for what Hunter Taylor did last weekend in Baltimore. Was it maybe the best 90 minutes of, of this freshman season? <laughs> they, Michigan went back and forth with Carr and Taylor throughout the year and quite honestly Kevin Connery told us this week that Shane Carr told the coaches at halftime of that Penn State game that he just wasn't seeing it he wasn't on that day they made the change they almost started Shane Carr in the championship game against Maryland saying that we're not here unless Shane Carr plays out of his mind in 2023 but they went with Taylor and He's a hero. Wow, look at the long outlet pass. Long, he's got options. Cursed, flips it back to Michael Long. Who wants it? That is a big battle, and Michigan comes away from the scrum with possession. Erlen with a fine idea to flip the field in a sense. But now the Wolverines have it on this end of the field. And that's the skill of these players. I mean, that was a rope from what? I'm not good at math. You went to Syracuse, you <laughs> tell me. 80 yards? Yeah. 80 yards strike into Long's stick. And you're gonna see that a lot in today's game, potentially, 10-man rides, which means the goal is vacated. It's the equivalent of an empty net in hockey. All due respect to the quarterbacks in the field, this field this past fall, I think that was the longest pass in a sense <laughs> of the year. But, okay, so this time Cornell's gonna take it. It is Mother's Day, and that is known as the mom goal. When it hits the side of the cage, you could hear the, the Michigan faithful erupt thinking it was in, but no dice. It's outside of the cage, and happy Mother's Day to everybody out there watching us and, and joining us for this terrific game on a beautiful day oh, out it's, in New York. It's brilliant. We've got temperatures in the high 50s, sunshine. Ithaca buzzing the last couple of days. Cornell hosting again in the first round. And, I, and I'm, a, I'm a Baltimore guy, so I'm a little soft when it comes to the weather, but high 50s, <laughs> high 50s in Ithaca, that's that's like summertime, right? The, the blood's thinned out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Here 
Nearly an errant pass. Nice reach by Andrew Dalton, who has a goal in this game. Hornell seventh in the country in scoring offense. They average nearly 15 goals a game. Again, thanks in large part to this man, number 15. Watch the rifle that he is going to let loose at times today. Five seconds on the shot clock. Bouncer. That one's looked like it ricocheted off of the the pipe. So it so it hit a Michigan defender. And in order to satisfy the shot clock and get a reset, you've got to hit the pipe, hit the goalie and have it rebound, or a goal is scored. Because that hit the defender, as we look in our left corner of your screen, excuse me, right corner of your screen, looks like it went off of number 16, Van Wees's leg. That does not satisfy the shot clock. So good defense by Michigan. Shot clock violation on the big red. Michigan back on offense. Final three minutes of the first quarter. Michigan scored first. Three in a row from the Big Red. Now a one-goal game. The Wolverines, a prolific offense that they have as well. Their breakthrough season. Swagger is the word I would use to, to describe Michigan the last couple weeks. When you look at their body of work, atrocious game against Johns Hopkins at the Big Ten. They couldn't clear the ball. Could have beaten Rutgers up in Piscataway coughed up a four goal lead at home to Penn State. They finally put it all together at the end of the year. Back behind the cage. What will Aiden Mulholland do? He whizzes it by Erlin. Now we're tied up. One thing to keep an eye on in this game, the face off disparity keeps up, the pressure Michigan can put on this Cornell defense. Mulholland, is it strength or is it stick technology? Absorbs the body checks and some stick swinging by the Cornell defense. Mulholland is able to keep his body turning, keep his wrists fluid, and slips it past Erlin, much to delight of head coach Kevin Conry. His 11th goal of the year and the first in more than a month. His last score was back on April 7th. And so the sophomore has this game knotted up at three apiece. Cornell with an important faceoff win there. Nice faceoff win. That's a break that the Michigan defense needed. Cornell three goals so far in this contest. And number 15 in white, Kirst has not figured into the scoring equation yet. This is a big red team that beat Army 11-10, and Kirst was held without a goal. So they can find secondary scoring when their superstar is limited. There's a bouncer and a score, Michael Long. And he's an example. Number one in white has been hurt this season. Came back, has played the last few weeks, and what a difference maker he is. Beautiful cut. And look at that bouncer. This is a high to low offering that just nestles under the crossbar. High bouncers will go today. Connor Busick with the fist pump and long in only his eighth game of the year. He is such a difference maker with his speed, his vision. He puts so much pressure on that right hand side of the defense that can open things up for Kirst on the left. Yeah, Busick, what did he say the other day? He says he's, he's kind of the brains of the operation. So poised out there, he can do a lot of things. Abbott Houlihan was taking a beating there with a minute and 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. Timeout taken by Kevin Connery to save that possession. Not the worst thing in the world, but not the greatest decision by Houlihan, who is a wing specialist on faceoff. Scored a couple goals last weekend in Baltimore, but if you're Michigan, you're hoping that he makes better decisions. You get into that teeth of the defense, you've got to make a decision. You've got to shoot or get rid of the ball. Luckily, Houlihan, he's an unusual looking athlete. <laughs> he's, he's a tall drink of water, two bar syndrome, meaning he's got the helmet up around the chin. How can he see out of that thing? But <laughs> Kevin Condry bails him out with the timeout. Michigan will have another opportunity to score. So it's Cornell 
by a goal late in the first. First place of the Ivy League again. Consecutive seasons at the Big Red have done that under their youthful head coach, Connor Busick. He took over in late 2020, of course. The Ivy League cancels all sports, uh, spring sports, I should say, in 2021. So in his first season, they go all the way to the title game. And with maybe a target on their back this year, they have performed nicely. They've been one of the premier teams in the nation all year. He told us this week that 2022 was getting back up to speed after the 2020 season was canceled midway through, and 2021 didn't happen for any of the Ivy League teams, and they surprised some people last year. He said there's been no surprising in 2023. They have had a target on their back, and during that timeout, you saw him not in either huddle. That's the trust and confidence that he has in his assistant coaches, Paulo Safari and Jordan Stevens. Yep. And that is something that you don't see all the, these days, let alone with a young coach who, you know, feel, probably feels a need to have his hands in everything. His counterpart on the other side, Kevin Connery, sixth season now as the head man. A year ago, they win seven games. They didn't win a, a single Big Ten contest all year. But after that win on the road against Maryland in early April. It really sparked this team. They've got five and two since that point, including four straight, the three in the Big Ten tournament. Kevin Connery's team playing with a whole bunch of belief and confidence. And they've just tied things up again late in the first. Peter Thompson with the finish. Against Ohio State in their win at the end of the regular season. Mikey Bame had eight goals. Their rematch a week later, six Wolverines had two apiece, including this man, number 29, in the maize and blue, Thompson. Normally you see Mikey Bame hanging out over there, but again, ball watching by that Cornell defense. That was nothing fancy. That was just Mulholland with a dodge to cage, drew a slide, Thompson steps out, catch and finish. Former Georgetown Hoya has things even at four late in the first. We expected high scoring, and we expected a close game. And we're getting it. You know, based on what Michigan has done recently, of course, you know, you can look at polls or not, but if you look at the inside lacrosse, latest rankings after championship weekend. Heck, Michigan is actually ranked ahead of <laughs> Cornell. They're eight and nine in that ranking. So that just gives you a good indication and illustration of how perhaps how evenly matched this one yeah. may be. I get a vote in that poll and, and we are a fickle bunch. When you're hot, you shoot up the charts. <laughs> yep. You lose one game, you're, you're dropping like a stone. But Michigan really served notice. Again, it was the confidence and the swagger they displayed. Aaron pass, it's free. Michigan trying to scoop it. Kirst had it momentarily, knocked out. Michigan regathers with 9.1 left in the first. Quite an even first quarter of an entertaining first round battle. Four apiece in Ithaca after one. As advertised, Kevin Connery is not happy with how slow that restart. Rules in lacrosse, when that ball goes out of bounds, you pick it up, step in bounds to play, put your stick up, boom, we're playing. The referee for some reason delayed that. Kevin Connery not happy. Done with the first quarter. Eight different goal scorers for a side for Michigan and Cornell. Entertaining start in Ithaca.
Michael Cosgrove, number 21 on Michigan. Just wanted to wish my mother, Maureen, a happy Mother's Day. Hi, this is Michael Long from Cornell Lacrosse, and I'm here to wish my mom, Les, and all the other mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to all who celebrated. Boy, I like the enthusiasm. They're, they're smart. They're smart guys. Absolutely. They've learned well. <laughs> happy Mother's Day to my wife, Erica, my mother, Marion, watching here today. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Misfits, Nancy, she's the best. Absolutely. Brunch is out of the way, and, and well, here we go. We got lacrosse. How about the understanding <laughs> of, of us having to work on Mother's Day? That's uh, good stuff. Make sure to get that card in the mail. That's you know, right. Back on Monday. That's right. Starting another, in the second quarter. Another face-off win for Michigan, but statistically, when you look at it, 50-50. Uh, Michigan won five out of nine in the first half, now six out of ten. So Cornell's hanging in there at the face-off dot. But Wheat Felt and Rowlett will hunt you down. I think there were two face-offs that Cornell won that Michigan got back, and they count as, they count as wins, but they're not possessions. And there was an expectation coming into this one that that matchup might favor Michigan. Wheat Felt has got the best face-off percentage in the country. There's a good look from Mulholland, who scored late in that first quarter. Tracked nicely, though, by Erland. That was right at him. Good save, and you, you took the words right out of my mouth, Kevin. Just a, a bad shot placement by Mulholland. And look at those long clears again. That's the second 80-yard toss by Erland as Michigan's electing to kind of pack it in and not give up the middle of the field to this Cornell team. So they're really giving up the, the edges and the perimeter to Cornell from long ways away. You like that? I don't mind it. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more pressure, you know, because because that's a way you, you only have 20 seconds to get it over the midfield line. This and is Coyle. And if you can pressure, that makes life hard. Oh, that was great ball movement that time. Long shot was tracked and saved by Taylor. So two saves, one at each end for each respective team, but on the right-hand side, high to high with the stop. But to that point, though, around, about riding, Michigan is not known as a great riding team. So maybe they're not giving up a whole lot by not pressuring. Michigan playing without Ryan Cohen. He is part of that terrific trio. Those three, one, two, and three in the Big Ten in total points this year. Michigan's fared well thus far without Cohen, but he is they're not getting the movement from up top, meaning his dodge, defensive rotation, and his feeding ability, 29 assists, is what all of his replacements do not, they cannot match, but it's an elite feeding ability. Uh, it was 29 assists, second best in the league this year. So it has been others. Both Bame and Zawada have scored. Clay trying to get on the board as well. That one knocked away by Erlin. Great save by Chase Erlin. Clay, the elder statesman of this Michigan attack, grad student, captain. And we did see the, the, the feed, but it came from a top, excuse me, bottom to top versus downhill. But I like the adjustments that first year offensive coordinator Scott Bita has made for Michigan due to the absence of Ryan Cohen. It's more sharing of the ball and more of a dodging up top, being a party starter by committee. That's now six saves for Erlin. Kelleher got forced back out. Coyle bounces it by Taylor. It's good. And a one goal lead again for Cornell. Kelleher is a bulldozer when he dodges. What he does when he dodges down the right alley, he basically clears out the left side. And the throwback to Billy Coyle, number 11 in white, allows him to have a great first step, quick burst, gains leverage. He's coming downhill, and he bounces it past Taylor. Great offense by Cornell. The setup from Long opens up the field for Coyle. He's got all that speed you have seen. Oh, the faceoff win and a strike. Wheatfeld, we're talking about the athleticism. The kid can play. Face off, I will not get off. Wins it out the front door. Look at the stick handling. 
He takes a good slap on the bottom hand as well. Soaks the check, raises his stick. Erlen read it. Looked like he got a piece of it, but not enough to keep it out of the back of the net. Wheat felt showing not only his ability to win faceoffs, but to produce offense. Yeah, an obvious first team selection this year, all conference for Cornell. You might be having some nightmares. There was a whole lot of that last weekend against Yale in that yeah. semifinal loss. Well, Jack Cascadden for Cornell comes back and says, I'm gonna try to one up you, wins it out the front door himself, just shoots it wide. That is something, you know, we, we can't downplay the Cornell faceoff men. They have three draw takers that can make things difficult for you in Silas, Cascadden, and Petrakis. Can they wear down Michigan, though? I mean, th these are two studs at the faceoff dot in Rowlett and Wheatfelt. And to that, uh, Kevin Connery, he instills a lot of trust in those two. Each are going to get three, and then you see the other for three. It's a very systematic approach. There's a rip, tracked by Taylor. Both of these goalies play very sound fundamentally. Meaning, what do I mean by that? They don't guess. They don't drop their stick, they don't flop. They're not moving their body and their stick in one general direction. Later tonight, we're gonna see Jack Frassion. He's kind of the exact opposite. Like, he's a risk taker, he's a little bit more unorthodox, goes low fast. Erlen and Taylor both kind of hang in until the ball's coming at them. Like more uh, very reactionary versus guessing. This is Zawada. One of the more feared attackers in the Big Ten. The short stick, that one knocked away. Cornell gathers it. And can they benefit off of the turnover? Well, that's an area this year Michigan has done a fine job of taking care of the ball and possessions. They don't turn it over that often at all. Great point. That's an uncharacteristic Zawada turnover. I thought he rushed it a little bit. But credit Cornell for getting their stick in the passing lane, knocking it down. And Adler doing a really nice job so far on Zawada. Number nine in maize and blue, only one goal. And that came in transition. That wasn't a one-on-one -on -one matchup or the responsibility of Gavin Adler. Spencer Wertheim, part of that first line midfield, back to Sheehan. Well, and one conspicuous absence from the scoring column in the first half over on this end, CJ Kirst. You gotta give a lot of credit to Darby and the team defense of the Wolverines in that respect. He hasn't even taken that many shots. Wertheim buries it past Taylor. Back and forth we go. No Kirst on the scoring sheet, no matter. Great players, when they might not be filling up the stat sheet, still get the respect and attention of a defense. And what does that do? It opens things up for your teammates. Wertheim just steps into a vacant area, takes the feed, steps down, whips it past Taylor. Wertheim with a great finish. And these two teams, kind of like a good boxing match, just going back and forth, punch, counter punch. That bounce shot skips over Taylor's head and the crossbar. That was Cascaded again. He's showing some athleticism and lacrosse playing ability. And if that keeps up, one of them is gonna, one of them's gonna drop. He's getting closer and closer. And he's gonna figure out where to place that shot in order to find the back of the cage. Kelleher, so here he is again, trying to muscle by his defender. Kicked away by Taylor. You know, back to your point about just the, the punch counter punch. It makes sense, right, for both of these teams. The one thing that both coaches lauded about their rosters this year, veteran, mature, you know, able to pick, uh, take a punch and bounce back. Resilient teams, I think, are good ways to describe both. Cornell has the experience. They know what it takes to win in the NCAA tournament. Made it to a championship a year ago. Plus, they got the sting of that loss a week ago, so a little bit of motiva motivation. Michigan, they've been the doormat.
of the Big Ten Conference. They didn't win a conference game last year at all. Kevin Connery says, though, those who stay will be champions. So this is a team that has played with a ton of confidence and a nothing-to-lose mentality. Bryce Clay, the fifth-year senior, is had to persevere through some injuries, has come on of late. Here's Brown, the speed. If I'm Brown, I love his spacing on the dodge. Cut that off a little quicker, meaning take a step forward when you get that step on your defender. I love the space. Got to go to cage, though, to make yourself more of a scoring threat. You're drawing a slide, but when you're when you're 15 yards from the goal, that's not his game. Let's see what Clay does. Spins, fires it wide. But a lot of times you don't want to shoot off of the primary dodge. You want to kind of settle into your offense, move it on. But I think with Brown and his speed, he gets his hands free. I haven't seen separation at this level since the likes of, a, let's say, jo uh, Kyle Harrison yeah. from Johns Hopkins. Fires it high. The shot clock was draining anyway. And so Cornell is coming back the other way. So remember, the NCAA men's lacrosse coverage, championship coverage, it continues next weekend. Quarterfinals. The action begins Saturday, May 20th at noon Eastern on ESPNU. And for more information on the lacrosse championship, go to NCAA.com. We'll be in Albany. In Annapolis, yeah, next weekend for the quarters. How about? Go back the other way. Yeah. How about we already got the one side of the bracket? Johns Hopkins, Notre Dame in one quarterfinal. So almost a home game for the Blue Jays. And how about Army getting to play in the quarterfinals with a chance to punch their ticket to championship weekend, playing on their arch rivals turf at the United States Naval Academy. What a job Joe Alberici has done with his Black Knight Ball Club in 2023. You know, Cornell had to fight really hard to take down Army on the road last month. I mean, that was a difficult game. Now here's Bame trying to shake by his man. That was Kyle Smith He's trying to knock him away from the cage. Jackson finds Zawada. Five minutes to go in the half. Zawada gives it away. Here comes Cornell. Transition opportunity. Davis getting chased. Coyle to the doorstep. And then Long backs it out. Good recovery by Michigan. Great hustle getting into the hole, which we call the defensive area in front of your goaltender to limit a clean look. I'm not liking Josh Sawada right now. Two consecutive turnovers, and that one he didn't even have Max Adler on him. So he seems a little discombobulated here in the second quarter. Do you think the absence of Cohen factors into that a bit? I think it does, because Zawada would could be looking for number 40 in maize and blue. Also could benefit from the dodging up top of Cohen to get him more into a rhythm off ball, his shooting stroke down. So with Cohen out, Zawada's being taxed with being even more of an initiator and playmaker in this one. Curse, that one bounces off the pipe. Jack Wells scoops it up. It's the bricklayers, the short stick defensive <laughs> midfielders for Michigan. Great feed inside. Right now, Cornell's playing better team offense than the Michigan Wolverines. They're also not playing without one of their best players, as Michigan is in Ryan Cohen. So Michigan's just got to settle in right now. Good defensive adjustments by Cornell, making life very difficult. They're sliding quick, getting sticks in the gloves, and they've had really good approaches so far in their recovery defense in the first half. Cohen out to what uh, for what we were told was an internal issue. So Wada knocked down. Pounded, finds, that was Babe who found Zawada, and it's backed up by Michigan. Timeout with 3.04 to go 
in the second quarter. Big red by a goal at home in Ithaca. Cornell by one late in the first half. Uh, Mark, only the second time these two programs have squared off against one another in their Division I era. The connections between the two programs a bit deeper. There's Bob D. Giovanni. He was the MVP of the 1963 Cornell men's lacrosse team. So he graduates Cornell, goes and gets his master's at Michigan, where he then, two years later, founds the lacrosse club at the club level at Michigan. A great story and just proof that as we get a look at Kevin Connery and Connor Busick, we're seeing it happen in modern day lacrosse as well, Kevin. Players from the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, they go and set down roots out West or in the Midwest or down South. And that's how lacrosse germinates. You get players from traditional areas to start programs, coach, instruct, and all of a sudden, you've got really good lacrosse players popping up and coming from all over the country to play at the highest level. Bob D. Giovanni was ahead of his time, going out to Michigan and having the vision to start that club program back in the 60s. Yeah, 50 years at the club level, that's a long time. They Absolutely. finally make that elevation to Division I back in 2012. And Michigan is not done perhaps making history this season. First NCAA tournament appearance. Can they win? Can they advance? They just nodded things up there. Isaac Aronson with the latest. We talk about who's going to pick up the scoring slack for Ryan Cohen not playing here today. You got to love Aronson. Look at the roll dodge. Pass the defense, gets to the middle of the field. When you're playing on a football field with the markings, get between the hash marks. That is prime real estate. Aronson does that, diving forward, the wrist strength, the snap it pass Erlin, and we're level once again. 11 goals this year for the junior. Here comes Keskadden. Seems like Cornell has settled on number 20 in the white and red. Oh, Keskadden there. <laughs> it's the wipeout from Rowlett. Everybody laughs about poles going down trying to score. Face off, men. They're just as bad. They want to go to the cooker. And you can see Cascadin <laughs> saying, should I? So it was, uh, it was devils or those those people that they pop up on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah the devil it, and the it. angel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do it, do it. I don't think so, Jack. Worth time with a goal today. 
towards the crease. Had that one knocked away. That was an easy one for Taylor. 120 to go. So Michigan can, if it wants, essentially use most of the clock. Here's Bame. He's got one goal today. Let's it go. It's backed up by Clay. Love the use of the picks. And we're seeing Bame's game. He can dodge from in close, out front, but he likes more space. Smaller guy gets his hands free. And when he's coming downhill, we talked about his ability to shoot with his feet planted, but he's a handful on the run as well. Tied up at six inside of a minute. First half of play, very good battle between the eight seed Cornell and Michigan. This is Jake Bonomi. Thirty seconds on the shot clock. About a three and a half second differential between shot and game clock. End of the half. I like this matchup right here, Brown. It's Brown on Smith. Now Davis switches onto him. Brown took some contact. Um, okay, there's a flag. Oh, behind the back! Bonomi! Justin Brown. We talked about his ability to draw slides. With the absence of Ryan Cohen, Brown has been the primary initiator on offense from up top. Gets mugged on the side. Call the Ithaca police. Flag is down, and look at the feed and the sweet finish. The BTB behind the back by number two, Jake Bonomi. Not only is that a goal to give them a one goal advantage, potentially heading into halftime, that's a juice goal. That is a motion pumping through the sideline of the Michigan Wolverines. That was saucy. <laughs> Six seconds to go. And so Michigan, which has had a couple of one-goal leads today, it does. It takes the one-goal lead into half. Boy, it's a stick went snap. Billy Coyle, that stick stinks. just snapped. Didn't even get checked, and the stick breaks wow. in half. And that's an adjustment Coyle's going to have to make. He's going to have to get a new shaft at, at halftime. And, you know, it'll take him a minute. It's not the end of the world, but it's going to take him a minute to, uh, to get used to it. The weight, the feel, all that other kind of thing. I mean, it's like a... That's like a a great hockey player, you know, playing without snapping his his favorite stick, and then he's got to switch to a new a new wand. Got it on a rather inconsequential play to end the half, and so Michigan has the one goal advantage over Cornell, playing in its first NCAA tournament and looking to advance and keep making history. So we have got the head man, Kevin Connery is here with us. Coach, we appreciate you taking a moment here. I I'd be curious, with no Ryan Cohen today, how would you describe the effort from your offense? Yeah, we're, we're uh, you know, we got a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Guys are out there competing um, and just uh, leaving it all on the field. You know, we, we have that mindset, why not us? Because there's no tomorrow. So that's the way we go out and compete every day. Message to your team at halftime, Coach, here at the break. Yeah, we just got to settle some things down in the defensive end. We're doing some silly things. Uh, obviously, C.J. Curtis is garnering a lot of attention for us, but, uh, you know, we can't keep creating offense for him. Um, but ultimately, I think we're doing a lot of great stuff off the ground in the ride, and uh, we controlled the back end of the, the second quarter there with the pace of play. And so, Coach, we appreciate the time. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. So Michigan scores the last two goals to close out the half, takes the one-goal lead into the locker room. First round action in Ithaca. Exhilarating first half. The Wolverines up by one.
halftime in Ithaca. Second half between Cornell and Michigan. Halftime in Ithaca. Second half between Cornell and Michigan. Coming up in a few. First, though, let's look back at yesterday's action. Entertaining, exciting day games all day long. The nightcap, Army, and the defending national champion, Maryland Terps. Mark, they were up against it early on, Maryland was. Army, the Patriot League champions, came in with focus, determination. I loved their execution. Knox Dent between the pipes was terrific, but the defending national champions were not going to go down without a fight. They tied it up late, however, Gunner Fellows his goal to untie it in the final minutes. They add the empty netter as well to clinch the win. And so Maryland becomes the lone seeded team that gets toppled yesterday. The defending national champs are gone. And so Army awaits the winner of Penn State and Princeton, which is later this evening. There you go. This is our side of the bracket. Now, Mark, the rest of the action yesterday featured a couple of lopsided games. How about Virginia, the number two seed in this tournament? They got up early, always make noise in this tournament, and they really put Richmond behind the eight ball quickly. Tremendous offensively, Xander Dixon with the goal, and then the heavens opened up. A torrential downpour that would make Noah jealous. But after the break, Virginia resumed their dominating scoring ways. Splish splash, you can see the water flying on every step. 17 goals for Virginia. One of the six teams yesterday that scored 15 or more goals. Then later on, Georgetown and Yale. The Bulldogs had an early lead in this one, but Tucker Dornovic took over. Very potent offenses. Goaltending was optional yesterday at Cooper Field in Washington, D.C. because the offenses were humming. But the combination of Tucker Dornovic and Nikki Solomon propels Georgetown to the next round. It was tied at 16 all, and then Georgetown goes on the three to one run. And after losing in the first round last year, they advance. Our final game that we're looking back at from yesterday, Notre Dame. Oh man, this was not even close from the early goings. Notre Dame, a team that has played with a chip on their shoulder all year long, a snub from last year in the NCAA tournament, a bona fide national championship contender. They were a buzzsaw against the Utah Utes out of the A-Sun. Yeah, and, and so the two of the three top-seeded teams from the ACC, Virginia and Notre Dame, advance Duke, the top seed. They're coming up after us against Delaware. What will it do in its first round game? Second half between Cornell and Michigan is coming up in Ithaca.
Gorgeous weekend around Ithaca. Yeah, there's the Ithaca Comets. Nice place to grab a bite. Yeah, Mark. Spent some time there yesterday. Incredible atmosphere. College Town Bagels and uh, the Ithaca Ale House. They got some of the Dixon's money. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, delicious. Well, second half of our game, Cornell, Michigan is coming up. However, here's who the winner of this game may face. It's either going to be Duke or Udell, the number one seed in the field as a prolific offense. Dyson Williams, Brennan O'Neill, Andrew McAdory on the attack. The unique force that is number 34 in the white and blue. And Jake Naso at the faceoff dot feeds them by winning faceoffs and getting the Blue Devils possession after possession. O'Neill, the Tawarton Award finalist. However, Delaware just trampled Maris. Mark, they scored 25 goals a couple of days ago. You want to talk about a prolific attack unit. Ty Kurtz, an incredible shooter. JP Ward and Mike Robinson. Another layer to this matchup, Ben DeLuca spent a couple of seasons as an assistant coach down in Durham under the leadership of John Donowski. And let's not forget, Delaware sprung the first round upset a year ago. This is a team that is not afraid of any challenge. And no, they are not. DeLuca, remember, the former Cornell head coach as well. So here are some of the aforementioned. This game follows ours. It's number one Duke in Delaware, and the winner of our game will face either of those two. And then to finish off our slate, we've got Penn State and Princeton. The Nittany Lions, one of the four Big Ten teams in the field. What a turnaround a year makes for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Won only three games a year ago. T.J. Malone, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. The trainer brothers from the attack and the midfield are prolific. And the Big Ten Specialists of the Year, Jack Frassion, the modern day version of Gumby between the pipes. So flexible, terrific, unorthodox style. The Penn State Nittany Lions looking to get that bad taste out of the mouth, falling in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. He looks a little better in the, in the navy blue than the green anyway. Meanwhile, though, uh, Princeton, they won a couple of games in New York last week at the Ivy League Tournament Champs. Yeah, this is a team that has really put it together over the last couple of weeks. Michael G. and Confaro, Mike G. between the pipes, the Patriot League, um, excuse me, the Ivy League Tournament MVP, Coulter Mackesy, Alex Vidaro. This is an incredibly potent Princeton offense. This is going to be a terrific matchup between the Nittany Lion team that was last in championship weekend in 2019 and a Princeton team looking to return after being and getting a taste last year. A couple of really entertaining first round games yesterday. To your point, this should be no exception later this evening. Again, all of our action on ESPNU all day long. When we come back, highlights, stats from our first half at Shulkoff Field.
in a very tight first half, Michigan scores the last two goals of the opening half, has a one goal lead as we start the third quarter in Ithaca. It's been an entertaining first round battle. He is Mark Dixon, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. So five ties, six lead changes. No, neither team is led by more than two goals. It's been a pretty tight one. As advertised, uh, you used the word juicy at the top of the show to describe this matchup. It has been just that. And not only did you mention all the lead changes and ties, but we've got, what, 13 goals collectively and only one player, Billy Coyle, has multiple goals. And that's yep. for the Cornell Big Red. So what a game. 12 different goal scores. And so it started with Cornell taking a 3-1 lead. Here's Coyle. Yeah, great footwork to get around the cage. What's impressed me the most is at the faceoff, Jack Cascadden has done a great job for Cornell, dealing against Justin Wheatfelt, but CJ Kirst only has one assist, and yet they only trail by one goal here at the half. It's been a back and forth affair. Both offenses have been incredibly aggressive. I like the defense and the goaltending. And how about Jake Bononi putting on an exclamation point for the Michigan Wolverines at the end of that first half? The behind the back score. So most of the numbers are largely even. Now, Michigan's taken a few more shots. Sure, it has won one more faceoff, but this is as close as it gets after 30 minutes. And I think if you're at halftime and you're Cornell and you're almost 50 50 with the Wolverines at the faceoff dot, you would take that. So let's see what adjustments, if any, the teams have made here at halftime. And we also got to note again Ryan Cohen missing today's game due to some, some issues and Michigan really hasn't skipped a beat. They found other guys to create on offense, in particular, number one in the maize and blue, Justin Brown. And how about the matchup between Gavin Adler and Josh Zawada? Zawada with only one goal there in the first half. But other guys, it's NCAA tournament time. It's a postseason. Got to step up. Seven different goal scorers for Michigan. And yes, what we were told, uh, what Michigan Relayed to us was Cohen out due to an internal issue within the program. And they were planning for much of this week for his, uh, for his absence, I should say. Second half, here we go, in Ithaca. And a face-off win for Cornell. That's really the first time today the Wings have come into play. Number seven in the white and red of Cornell, Christopher Davis with a huge ground ball to get the possession for Cornell. And they'll try to stymie whatever momentum was generated by that Bonomi behind the back at the end of the first half. Yeah, in the final minute of that opening half. Very explosive C.J. Kirsch to wartime finalist. Trying to muscle by his man. That one was denied. Good defense by Andrew Darby again. And kick save at a butte by Hunter Taylor, but there was gonna, we're gonna see a, a ground ball show up on the stat sheet. What a great check down by C.J. Kirst. Kirst, that one whistles wide. So the, the ball was at his feet. Darby was about to pick the ground ball up, and Kirst checks it, scoots it to what we call go to green, run to green, and picks up a clean ground ball to get this second chance possession for the Cornell Big Red. So what I'm trying to say, in addition to being a great scorer, do the little things to be a two-time finalist. Kelleher with another. That's his second score. Seven up. Again, it's the ground ball from C.J. Kirst that makes this opportunity possible. Kelleher, again, a bulldozer with speed. Shake, right to left, split dodge, gets down the alley. There's no slide, and he sends it far post. It nestles in the bottom corner of the cage. Been impressed with Kelleher all day today. 21 goals on the year, the junior from Wontaw, New York. All Ivy League first team selection. And yeah, that's the key, right? When he, when he starts getting downhill, he could be dangerous, and you see four points for him early in the third. Not only does he have speed and athleticism, he's a load. He can knock you and put you back on your heels. 6'3", 220, out of Wontaw, New York, the great MacArthur High School on the island. How does Michigan respond? It's breakthrough season. 
its first NCAA tournament appearance after the club program was elevated to Division I back in 2012. John Paul was there as the head coach to start this thing. Kevin Connery was an assistant for several years. The architect of the Maryland defense before coming to Ann Arbor, winning the 2017 national championship. That opened up the opportunity for Connery. It was a hot commodity at the time. Michigan snatched him up. Bame finds a wide open clay. Brilliant reflexes from Erlin. Those are the shots you have got to can in an NCAA first round one goal back and forth affair. Clay gets wide open on the backside, but great reaction from Erlin to stymie that opportunity. Michigan, Mark, they played nine ranked teams this year. They beat Penn State and Maryland in three days in Baltimore last weekend to take home the Big Ten tournament crown. So, so they, beat, they end up beating five Big Ten teams this season. Heck, they had only won five the prior 11 years against Big Ten competition. Combined. I should say the, yeah. the prior eight years from 2015 to 2022. It's a program, historic season this year, regardless of winning that Big Ten championship. First team to have a home playoff game, meaning the Big Ten quarterfinals. That was against Ohio State. On the doorstep, Clay could not handle it into too much traffic there. Yeah, boy, you, you beat your arch rival twice in a span of eight days. You think that might be the highlight of the spring? The highlights continued. Gave him a ton of confidence going into the Big Ten tournament. And it, it showed. Here's Kirst. Muscled away. That's Darby again. Good look. That was Chris Davis, who's got a couple of goals. The short stick. Defensive midfielder. Missed it wide. And a timeout is taken on the dead ball. I don't think Michigan like the personnel that they had on the field for this dead ball situation. Just four minutes in in the third quarter, knotted up at seven in Ithaca. Sunday night baseball later tonight. Cardinals, Red Sox at Fenway, 7 Eastern for Pacific on ESPN. Baseball tonight crew getting you set at 6 Eastern as well. Michigan, we just referenced its four game win streak. So it closes out the regular season with a win against Ohio State, then topples the Buckeyes in the quarters, takes out the top seed in the semifinal. And well, that was a 17 to 15 high scoring affair in Baltimore. And then a couple of days later, Michigan had this electric second quarter. They took a 10 to four lead into the half, only extended their lead further. 
against the reigning national champs who are gone, by the way, in this tournament. And so this spirited run, one that is fueled by what Kevin Connery describes as immense amounts of belief, confidence, trust, camaraderie as well. It's a great unit and is playing their best lacrosse. And they have denied CJ Kirst on all of his shot attempts today, Mark. He has not scored. He took a low angle one right there. But once more, the ground ball work of Cornell, extending the possession, getting a second swing at the pinata. Billy Coyle tracks that one down. I love their work on the ground balls here in the second half in particular in the offensive end. Yeah, that's twice now early in this quarter. You're right, they've gotten the second look. And Kelleher scored a few moments ago. And that's not easy when you're running full tilt with the sideline right there. Coyle picked it up clean, first time grounder and had the athleticism to stop, get out of the way of pressure and stay in bounds. Here's JJ Lombardi. Coyle turns, lets it rip. Michigan takes it. Great hustle by Hunter Taylor. Recognized that no backup was closer to the ball than him. So it's when and where the ball goes out. Whoever's closest to it on the shot gets possession. Hunter Taylor steals one for the Wolverines. There were still 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Not the greatest look from Billy Coyle. Low angle, kind of far out. And not only that, he didn't have backup. And he didn't have backup because the far side attackman didn't think he was going to shoot it. That's the freshman from Rockville, Maryland. Northwest of D.C. is where Taylor grew up. 14 saves in that title game against Maryland last weekend. But he was just excellent. 74% save percentage. Came into the game, the semifinal against Penn State, with Michigan trailing 10-8. And Shane Card only made five saves and wasn't seeing the ball well. He saved the first three Penn State shots he faced in the opening minutes of that third quarter. And that really gave Michigan the juice to go on and win that game. But Nomi's bouncer knocked away. Cornell is the closest to it. Great hustle by Charlie Box. I don't like the body language right now uh, of Josh Zawada. I think that was Zawada who didn't run the ball out. Box did. Zawada, 60 points coming into this game. Just the one goal on three shots. It's a Michigan team without Ryan Cohen, who is out due to an internal issue within the program. Nevertheless, we've got a tie game approaching the midway mark of the third quarter. Cornell trying to advance again, like it did a year ago, all the way to the national title game. I like that defense by Ryan Schreiber of Michigan, number 11 in maize and blue. You gotta run stride for stride with Kelleher and you gotta be physical with him. Bump him off his path. First, you gotta watch out for that right-handed shot this year. It has improved. Instead to the opposite side of the field. Sheehan to Wertheim. Getting deeper into the shot clock, only 10 seconds to work. Three seconds. Kirst lets it rip. That one hit off of a Michigan defender's helmet. Ball going back the other way. You can see the momentum and the emotion of the Michigan sideline. Defensive coordinator Jim Rogolski pumping his fists. Shot off the dome. Looked like it was his own teammate. And then Michigan. Cornell incorporating the 10 man ride. Andrew Darby with the shot. So again, the 10 man ride in lacrosse, kind of like an empty net in hockey. Although in hockey time, you do it desperation when you're trying to score a goal. Right. Lacrosse, you try to pressure and throw the clearing team off of their game. Good shot by Darby, shot backed up by Michigan. They retain possession. This is Peter Thompson with a goal today. 
denied by Erlin again. Thompson got drilled after that shot. Slow to get up. He's on his feet, but he is shaken up. Both defenses are playing incredibly well right now. Both goaltenders are on point. Remember, this was 4-4 at the end of the first quarter. Michigan has been playing more defense here in the third stanza. Right-hand side. Looks like a stick actually just got caught in the helmet of Thompson. No call. We play on. But I'm worried about fatigue settling in if you're a Michigan fan for their defense. This is Brian Luzzi up top for Cornell. Kirst still without a goal. He's only gone goalless one time this year against Army. That was a game that Cornell won with a late rally. The final was 11 to 10 back in mid-April. Turnover. Oh, the Michigan defense that they get a a break on that sequence. <laughs> That's a little bit of a reprieve. The governor at the 11th hour calls in the pardon for you. <laughs> but that's a break for Michigan. So e even though it's still a really cool day here today, they're not dominating at the faceoff dot. Cornell's doing a great job with things like this. This is Taylor. He's a long way from home. Mm. Cornell takes it. And, and an open one. Whoa. Oh, that one is hits the defender. That was Darby. Wow. Cursed. He's got nothing today. So in lacrosse, old rule. A shot goes out of, a goalie chases a ball, or the ball goes out of bounds. A goalie was used to be given five seconds to get back in the cage. That's not the case anymore. Every man's a goalie. Andrew Darby off the kisser. That did not tickle. Oh my goodness, and what another break. You're thinking curse with a wide open net. If you're cursed, you can almost lollipop that thing in because the defense was a good 30 yards from the goal. Close range look, and a score! Aronson with his second. Michigan, the beneficiary. After the faux pas on the other end. This team will not go away. They continue to fight. Hunter Taylor making the mistake. CJ Kurz can't capitalize. You come down the other end. Cornell seemed to be in a little bit of a packed in pseudo zone right there. And not anything fancy. Aronson with the step down, the snappy release, the great placement, terrific pace, finds the six by six and the Wolverines inch ahead once again. Look at this close face-off wing to us. Two guys, the referees aren't paying attention. They're fighting each other on the wing. That's McCurry and Davis. As Wheatfelt and McCadden, Cascadden, I should say, await. <laughs> you can see the referees are... <laughs> now you see them talking to each other. Like, that's the great thing about this game. You fight for every inch, you push, you shove, you compete. But then you're just like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> that was a push. Michigan wins the faceoff. Wheatfeld gets shoved in the back. So the Wolverines back on offense. Michigan by a goal as we push deeper into the third quarter. It was down three to one early in the first, and then this game has been within a goal either way since. Making a two goal lead. The largest of the day for Michigan. There's Bonomi. He had on his fancy pants at the end of the first half. And Aronson's just gonna show you traditional power. Down the alley, running out of angle. I think he surprised Erlen. I don't think Erlen thought he was gonna shoot that ball. You can see the hand positioning of number 22 in white and red. His stick was down. I think he thought that 
but Nomi was going to bang that ball to X, which is the area right behind the crease. Instead, he unleashes high to high heat, and Michigan up by a deuce. But Nomi has sparked of late. Now five goals for the senior over his last three games. Quite a consequential three games to start firing in, and Michigan back on this side of the field after the faceoff win. I mean, Ryan Cohen being out of this game like, think of the Golden State Warriors in their heyday. The big three, right? Curry, Green, Clay Thompson. Imagine one of those Take guys one of being them out. out. That's a huge piece missing. Michigan has responded. You have other guys, including Bonomi, with the ball right now, stepping up and taking on some of the leadership and scoring load. Well, and the LeBron James on the Cornell side, cursed, has been neutral, uh, neutralized in a sense today. Great point. There's a scrum in front. Zawada is there to regather it, and we might have the crease violation. Yeah. And that's a situation. Maybe, maybe you call a timeout if you're Michigan, but you can't because you already burned one earlier this quarter. You only get two a half, and the Wolverines would have been out of options because there was still a good amount of time left on the shot clock right there. Brendan Staub. To look out for him. He scored a goal uh, against Yale in that semifinal loss last weekend. But he thinks better of any sort of attempt. And Cornell, nearing the end of the third, held to seven goals. This offense scores about 15 a game. Well, and, and to your point, you talk about Big Ten and defense in 2023. Jack Posey for Penn State. We'll see him. 7.30 tonight versus Princeton. Before this game, we got to see Alex Mazzone and Scott Smith of Johns Hopkins. Michigan's at that team that no one really talked about their defensemen on an individual level. Maryland, we saw last night, Brett Makar, Ajax Zapatello out with injury. This is like a no-name defense that everyone has now learned their names in the lacrosse world. Wow, and Darby has done some brilliant work today. Taylor with another save, so that's now double digits. He's got 10 saves, and it's Michigan that is in command right now as we approach the end of the third with the two-goal lead. A defense that it's just improved, really, the last, let's say, month of the season, if that's fair to say. No question. And the offense can keep up with them in terms of, you know, hey, if someone's very potent on offense, Penn State in the Big Ten semi, they scored 15 goals. No worry. We got 17 in our back. They're playing with just such swagger right now. And this is a Cornell team. They are not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, they still have the nation's top defender down low who has neutralized Josh Shawada, number 77 in the red and white, Max Adler. Zawada in front. A great look, but just better defense to jar that one away from Thompson right on the doorstep. Well, and guess who? 77, Adler, with the trail check. And not only does he prevent the shooting motion, dislodges the ball, Michigan player goes in the crease. So double whammy for the Wolverines and a, a great play by Adler. Settled, can Cornell steal one here before the end of the quarter? Five seconds. In front, a rip. Dalton shot. That number 42 made famous here in Ithaca by Max Seabald. And I thought we were going to have a Seabald moment right there by Dalton. He was shaking and baking. Mark, we have got this Michigan Wolverines team ahead by two goals. Over the eight seed, Cornell, the kings of the Ivy League. The Big Red, down two. Michigan in front.
Sweeney bounces right back up and scores! Magnificent! Sweeney bounces right back up and scores! Magnificent! A PLL this summer. It will feature Gavin Adler. The reaction in the Cornell locker room after he was selected first overall by the Atlas on Tuesday. It was a, a no-brainer first-round selection, huh? Incredible defensive class this year for the Premier Lacrosse League, and you can see how much it meant to Gavin, such a humble player. Look at the guns on number 77. Just a tough, tough guy and a terrific pickup for Atlas Lacrosse Club. And you can see what he means to his teammates, the celebration, the happiness for their teammate. No set of sleeves is safe, I think, <laughs> when he's putting the shirt on. Adler, more of a vocal leader this year, Connor Busick said. He's, he's just completely raised the bar. Captain, All-American. I mean, he is, and you've sung his praises today. He's done a very fine job on he, the cover game. Yeah, he's an eraser, and he's, again, Zawada has one goal, but it was in transition. He's erased one of the best, not only players in the Big Ten, but one of the best players in the country in Josh Zawada. Zawada just the one goal, but it is Michigan that has a two goal advantage. Cursed! Finally with his first. No better time than right here with his team down two in the fourth. This will get his team going. This will get the crowd going. The turnover by Michigan in the middle of the field. The pickup by Adler. Then it goes to the other end, C.J. Kirst. He's been drawing doubles all game long, but then he steps away from the pressure. The whirling dervish delivers the sidearm shot, his first marker of the afternoon. I mean, look at the honors. Plus, he now officially leads the nation all alone in total goals, 64 this season. Just prolific. He is been relentless all year and coming up with his first score when his team needs it the most you see one goal on the seven shots it, you know we, we in moments like this at the level at which these guys are playing throw the stats out the window it's who can make that critical save who can score the big goal who gets the great takeaway in the ground ball Zawada between the wickets Michigan retakes the two-goal lead. What an answer by the Wolverines. It starts with Nick Rowlett at the face-off dot, and then Zawada recognizes the matchup. I don't have number 77 in my grill. I'm taking it to the rack. Beautiful sweep to the left hand, gets his arms free, and makes no mistake about it. A big time play from a big time player. Who wants it? Still free. Pinballing around. Cornell's got it. Down two goals. Early fourth quarter in Michigan's first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. It's got a two goal lead over the big red. No stranger at all to this stage of the big moments. Business has really picked up here in the first couple minutes of the fourth quarter. Oh, here's a giveaway. Long was trying to take it. Interference. The Cornell player made contact with the goaltender's stick while the ball was in his stick and he was within the safety of the crease. Not only is that an automatic turnover to Michigan, it's a free clear. So they don't have to go through the labyrinth that is the Cornell ride.
Thompson to Bain. That one whistles high. Backed up by Clay, so it stays here with the Wolverines. First NCAA tournament appearance. And will today be its first win in its debut? In front, that pass was knocked down. And I don't think Clay was expecting it. He's a lefty with the stick in his right hand. He was open, but a lot of times those feeds into the middle are fool's gold. You think you have that window, and it closes so fast. Great stick work by Cornell. Sticks in the passing lanes, denying the Wolverines. Down two, here's Kirst. Turns the corner, goal line extended back to Coyle. A shot, Taylor knocks it straight up into the air. Infield five rule. Who comes down? Who comes out with it? I think it was last touch by Blake. <laughs> well, it's still a shot. Still a shot. So closest when and where it goes out. And the hustle by number 31, Wartheim, in the red and white, wins the sprint to the sideline to retain possession for Cornell. Good call. They get the new shot clock. Yep. Cornell down two. Prolific offense. It's been held to eight goals today. That's it. Wertheim draws the flag. And a score. Aiden Blake converts. These guys are playing the game at the highest level, but they're doing the little things to help their team. Wertheim runs the ball out on a shot that was high up into the Ithaca sky. Then he gets a goal line extended. The flag is for the hold. And then Wertheim re-dodges, looks inside, finds Aiden Blake with the finish. Hustle turns into a goal for the Big Red. Penalty is wiped out since it was a 30-second technical foul. The goal is scored, penalty's wiped out, we're even up. Boy, a critical sequence. Shout out the senior from Haddonfield, New Jersey. Clean face-off win. Cascadin bounces in wide. Cornell now trying to regain that mojo on its home field in front of a, a terrific crowd. A whole lot of red in the stands. Curse bounces it. Stays here. Didn't have much angle, but he did have personnel on that far side of the field to run the ball out. He's just trying to make a play. Here's Lombardi. Close range look and a score. Aiden Blake buries it past Taylor again. Knotted up at 10 apiece. Aiden Blake with the last two strikes sees a short stick matchup and just runs by it. The crowd loves it. Is the Nard Dog in attendance? You know he <laughs> is doing backflip somewhere. Just cruises down the alley, paints the upper 90 with a dart. Aiden Blake stepping up and having his moments in this NCAA first round. Blake going acapella style all by himself. The back-to-back -back goals. Michigan, clean face-off win. That was Wheatfeld once again. We are knotted up at 10 apiece. Mark, neither team has been able to break away. Largest lead for either team, two goals. That's it. This is the, even though the only the top eight seeds, or top eight teams are seeded, this is a de facto 8-9 game. Yeah. So you kind of expect this. Similar in talent, similar in results in this season. And boy, we have been treated to a dandy here. I'm glad I skipped the mimosa bar this morning. <laughs> Benomi trying to dodge past Davis. Now Beam, close range. Got it! 
Baim took a knee to the back of the head, it looks like. Michigan wants a flag. Trainer is halfway out onto the field. Good to see Baim get up. He waves. He's waving him off. Boy, but that's a hope Kevin, he's okay. That's a Kevin Fitzgerald move right there. <laughs> I don't need your help. I'm good. The pick set by number 22 in maize and blue. Isaac Aronson is what frees up Baim. And look at the fearlessness of number five. And it wasn't a knee or a leg. It looked like it was just a, a player diving. And I'm good. I'm good. I want to go to the quarterfinals next weekend in Albany. I'm staying right here. Thanks for making me look tougher than I really am. Hey, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're Syracuse tough, I, you know? <laughs> Michigan by a goal. Less than 10 minutes to go. Rowlett. Oh, that pass picked <laughs> off by Adler. Wow. The eraser. Well, it's a disappearing act as well. Like I said, Wheatfelt is a terrific feeder coming off of the faceoff. Adler matches stick for stick and just plucks it out of the air. That is worth a goal right there because had that pass connected to Zawada, all alone on that right-hand side with all the time in the world and a clean look at the cage. That could have been disaster for the Big Red. They're down one back on this side of the field. They were trailing by two goals at the start of the quarter. Back within one. Boy, it's been a, a heavyweight battle. Here's Long. That one caught the pipe. Taylor can't deny that one, and Kirst has got another. Great hands by C.J. Kirst. Long with the shot, the rebounds, always dangerous. Look at the strength to pick the ground ball up, soak the check, and watch this snappy release by number 15 in white. Falling away toward the goal, but heading down to his stomach. Cursed finds the far post, and we're tied again. The to wartime finalist, the nation's leader in goals. Connor Busick saying no one works harder than him. No one's taken more shots. Goes out there, visualizes his success, where he is on the field, how to get the angles, how to get the looks. And so twice now in the quarter, Cornell has erased a two-goal deficit. Neither of these goalies have given up many rebounds today. And on that one, Taylor makes the save with his body. And it just ricochets right to 15 in red and white. He knows what to do with it when he gets in his stick. This one's been fantastic. Aronson chased all the way out to the top of the box. But Nomi starts to settle it down. He's got a couple of goals today. Tied at 11. Coming up on the halfway mark here in the fourth. Brown, there's the speed. Erland handles it. Adler cruising upfield. The separation that Brown got, and that was a rocket shot. Just not great placement. Michigan begging for an offsides call as number 33, Brendan Staub, dove over the midfield line as Max Adler was crossing. You can only have six offensive players in your offensive zone. Had Staub not been able to get back over, it would have been seven. It would have been offsides. It was close. Coyle was looking for Dalton, who was cutting. A nice idea. However, it's Shriver who scoops up the ground ball. Back and forth we go. Pace is picked up this, a bit, yeah? This has been a treat. <laughs> Turnover. Cursed. Boy, he's really good at that on the ride. <laughs> you're not dead, lost it. Cornell wanted that. You're not getting that call. <laughs> you're not getting that call. That's exactly what just happened. I don't mean to laugh, but number 99 in the maize and blue, Jack Wells, just jumps over as Van Wees went over the midfield line, but all for naught as Cornell is able to back off the shot. Tied up at 11. It's been a brilliant first weekend. Remember, Tournament coverage continues next weekend for the quarterfinal round. Action begins Saturday, May 20th at noon Eastern. For more information, visit NCAA.com. C.J. Curse, the indomitable junior from Bernardsville, New Jersey.
Starting to get cooking here. Scoreless in the first half, a pair of goals in the second. Or five. Finds his teammate, Blake, who's got two this quarter. Stoned. That was Taylor again. And again, no rebound. And it's clean save. If it's anywhere near his stick, he is sucking it up. Good look by Blake, good power, good follow by Hunter Taylor. Both of these goalies with double digit saves. Taylor with 13. Just a week after stopping 14 Maryland shots and route to a Big Ten tournament title. Taylor, the freshman, came on in relief in that semifinal win against Penn State. Wound up being a perhaps season altering decision that Kevin Connery made. Thompson dodging, and he puts it by Erlin. Peter Thompson, the Ann Arbor man. Unties this thing, and with 5.15 to go, here's Michigan. The breakthrough, the dream season. Is it going to continue? One goal lead. You're only 12 years old. You're not supposed to be at this level and to compete and not to back down. Do not tell that to Peter Thompson. Down the alley, sticks it, Connery fist in the air, Wolverines back up by a goal. Stanley Cup playoffs continue. Vegas, Edmonton, game six of the Western Conference semifinals. Coverage begins at 10 Eastern tonight on ESPN. Two terrific Western Conference semifinal matchups. Game seven of the other series between Seattle. And Dallas. Here we go, Mark. Five minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Nifty ground ball pickup by Ryan Schreiber, number 11 in the maize and blue. It's been Cascadin against the dual threat of Rowlett and Wheatfelt at the faceoff dot. Cascadin has played incredibly well today, but can he withstand? Thompson beats. Erland again. Peter Thompson with back-to-back -back scores in crunch time. Michigan has had an answer every time Cornell has come back and tied things. Just a straight speed dodge with a pick up top. And this one five holes. Chase Erland just can't get to it. Tried to kick that right foot out. Didn't get his stick low. Didn't move the stick. Again, it's all about 
not the quantity of saves, the quality. And right now, Hunter Taylor outplaying his counterpart, Chase Erland, but a hold on the faceoff gives Cornell the ball. That's big. Thompson, by the way, the only player with a hat trick. He's got three, including the last two for the Wolverines. Putting on his big boy pants here in Ithaca, two gigantic tallies. You know, he was on the disappointing end. First round exit at the hands of Delaware last year when he was at Georgetown. But Cordell punches right back. One goal game again. Hugh Kelleher gets it done. I'm going to go to the pants store, and I'm going to get myself a pair of those big boy trousers. Waist 30, 32 maybe. Length 40-ish for the 6'3 frame. I don't know. I'm a short guy. <laughs> Gets to the middle of the field. Kelleher, short stick matchup. He feasts on it. Whips the show. The shot. Low to low. Hat trick. He has been a force all day for Cornell. This game has been a treat. Neither team is led by more than two goals. After the ground ball pickup, another Cascadin. What did we say in the second quarter? That is the fourth shot opportunity from number 20 in white and red, Jack Cascadin. Wins the ball at his feet, cruises down. But he's got three Wolverines draped over his back. No worry. I'm going to get my first goal of the game. And it is a huge one that ties things up at 13 apiece. I think he's shopping at the same store Kelleher is. Consecutive goals for the Big Red. But we, we have seen both teams take a one goal, two goal lead, only to watch their counterpart their opposition today, punch right back. You called it like a heavyweight fight. It's just been punch, counter, punch. And so here we go, tied up at 13. Let's go back to the third quarter. Remember, Michigan had a one goal lead at the break. In the third quarter, they nearly suffered a quite an odd sequence right here. Taylor, the goalie, 50 yards away from his cage, got knocked out on the ensuing restart. Kirst has an open net, Darby. Use it as body, putting it on the line to stop Curse attempt, put Cordell ahead. And then the Wolverines scored back to back. It was Aronson and Bonomi. Michigan has had a lead for much of this second half, only to have seen the latest disappear. Cascadin ties things up at 13. Both of these teams have taken everything that the other team can give. This is now down to a four minute game. Four one minute games for each of these teams. Who can win more of that four minutes? Who can make the bigger plays in these four minutes? They will stamp their ticket to the quarterfinals next weekend. And the winner of this game would face the winner of the one coming up, Delaware and number one seed Duke. Right after us, right here on ESPNU, plus the Penn State Princeton matchup. Nearly through with this exhilarating first round of NCAA championship lacrosse coverage. Who wants it? Michigan had it momentarily. Bodies flying. Does Coyle have it? He's on top of it for Cornell. It is still free. Cursed. Got a bulldoze his way through. Cornell gathers it. Riding high after back-to-back -back goals. Boy, that is a significant pickup. Beautiful officiating, letting the guys figure it out. That was just a 15-second scrum of epic proportions. Kelleher dodging down the alley. Michigan, wow. though, knocks it away, and it's Jack Whitney who gathers it. Whitney a got critical it. cost turnover. Whitney got it on the carpet, Kevin, with an over-the-head check. Absolutely beautiful. Backhand punch the sky, check down, gets it on the turf. That 
was a huge risk going over the head of Kelleher, but he got the check and the possession for Michigan. Inside of three minutes now. Every pass, every move, so vital. Thompson has had a phenomenal second half. This is a, a Michael Bain. Bame getting hounded that time by Ben Staub, the freshman. Here's Thompson. Not much real estate. Now bounces it. Backed up by Michigan. 2.09 to go. And it didn't hit anything, so no shot clock reset. I think the officials want to. Nope, timeout Cornell. And that's the last of regulation for Connor Busick with 2.09 to go. He 23 sense, seconds yeah. on that shot clock. He senses the moment. He wants to make sure that the proper personnel and the proper scheme is incorporated in this 23 seconds. This could be the game. Why do I say that? 23 seconds to shoot, 2.09 left. Let's say Michigan cans this you don't want to roll the dice at the face-off dot right. against Wheatfelt, Wheatfelt and Rollette. And if Michigan were able to win that face-off, they've got one timeout left, and they're going to milk that clock as long as they can. So Connor Busick wants to make sure that his defensive coordinator, Jordan Stevens, gets everything in place to thwart this Michigan push. It's a great point, partner. Michigan 17 of 30 at the X. Here's our bracket. Winner. Faces either Duke or Delaware. That game coming up next down in Durham. Boy, the, how about the Army game yesterday? We are picking up right where we left off yesterday. A tie score, 13 up. Is Michigan, Mark, are they not done with creating history? Their first NCAA tournament as a Division I program, year 12. They're finally here. Everything was always in place. Things came together this season. Or is Cornell going to advance again? It reached the national championship game a year ago when Connor Music was a spry young 28-year-old. Now he's a veteran 29-year-old. Yeah, a grizzled veteran. <laughs> Here we go. Thompson's got it. 20 seconds to shoot. Thompson swings around. High pass. Bain was able to secure it. Bame with 10 seconds. Bame surveying Mikey Bame. Got it! Michigan in front with less than two minutes to go. Michael Bame, the Big Ten's top goal scorer, gets it done again. Rocky River, Ohio. St. Ignatius High School. Recognizes a short stick matchup. Ice in his veins. Doesn't rush. Doesn't force it. Head up. So you have to respect his feeding ability. Chase Erland, thinking Bain was going to go low to low. He guessed. His body's down, sticks down. He leaves the penthouse open. And Michael Bain comes in, pops the champagne. Maybe not yet. But he had himself a drink. Not so fast. Here we go. Cornell wins the faceoff. That's Cascadin. Boy, he has turned in some brilliant work in this second half. Plus, he scored a goal. He's been awesome. Absolutely awesome. And not only did he win that faceoff, he won it clean out the front door and smartly got it to coil. What does Cornell have here? No timeouts. So they're going to play. Cursed. Spins, Darby knocks him down. Darby sticks with him. Here's the premier matchup. Kirst going to work, trying to bully his way through. Knocked away by Taylor. Huge save. I love that rollback. And it looked like Taylor got a piece of it. And there is a, okay, there it is. Initially, the shot clock was not reset, but now it is a fresh 60 for the Big Red to work with. Mark with 102 to go. There's the shot, and a goal! Tied again with less than a minute to go, and it's Coyle that keeps Cornell's season alive. What a shot by Coyle, 
And this is a double whammy for Michigan because not only is there miscommunication on the defense, poor communication for the switch, but they had time to set up and catch their breath with the referees delaying for a quick second to reset the shot clock. Billy Coyle just uses his speed, gets top side, and puts a beautiful finish past Hunter Taylor. What an individual effort by number 11 in white and red. So now it's Coyle and Kelleher with hat tricks. Oh, man. Here we go, a minute to go. Cascaded back out there. Rowlett, his adversary. Theoretically, whoever wins possession here can hold it. Rowlett, a clean look. Michigan has it. Cornell coming hard with the ride. Big red, take it. Yeah. They force a turnover. In order to get a timeout, you've got to get the ball in your offensive half of the field inside the restraining line. That Cornell ride does the trick. So with no timeouts left, Cornell has an opportunity to win this game. Playing from behind all of this second half. Not by many goals, but they got it tied after the coil shot. Here we go. I am surprised Michigan did not call timeout on that dead ball. They could have, and they could have set their defense. Connery rolling the dice. This is Wertheim trying to get some separation. 11 seconds. Blake fires, hit the pipe. Backed up with 6.7 to go. Coyle with the hat trick today. Sees it on the line. Coyle bounces it. Ricochet away. We are going to overtime. Cornell with a late game surge down a goal. It's Billy Coyle who gets it to go. They had one look here. Had Taylor beat to the near side, sometimes a best friend of the goalie is the iron. Blake rings it off. Both teams, both coaches rolling the dice. Cornell burnt their last time out with two minutes left. They score the game tying goal with no safety net. Michigan doesn't call timeout at either point on that last possession and they live for overtime. You ready for overtime? Let's go.
our first overtime game of the first round of this NCAA Lacrosse Championship. It is in Ithaca. Got a whole lot of tense. <laughs> Look at faces in the crowd. Cordell playing from behind much of the second half. Scores three of the final four goals. Ties things up at 14, and here we go. Mark, sudden victory. First goal, game over. Four minute periods, and each team gets the one timeout. That's huge. It is. Rowlett is out taking the faceoff against Cascadin. He's won 11 faceoffs, 18 of 32 for the Wolverines. And here comes Cascadin. Oh, Cascadin, he scored here previously, fires. Taylor scoops it up. And now Rowlett has it coming back the other way. Whoa. So Michigan dodges the bullet. Is their dream season still alive? Will it continue? Will they continue making history? First NCAA tournament for the Wolverines. Are they going to notch their first win? Timeout Michigan. 23 seconds into overtime. And again, sudden death. First goal, game over. And with that on the line, Kevin Connery is going to use the timeout. How about the save from Taylor and the confidence of Cascade? By the way, this is the last few moments of regulation. Mikey Bame put the visitors ahead only to watch Billy Coyle score with just about a minute to go. Aiden Blake with what, seven seconds left, hit the pipe. Unbelievable action. Bame and Blake, Cascadin, Rowlett, Taylor with the gigantic save. His 15th, 16th of the game. Is that the one that gets Michigan the possession to score the goal. If I'm Scott Vita, offensive coordinator for the Michigan Wolverines, Thompson has had success, Bain has had success, which means Cornell's gonna be keying on those two players. So I'm looking for Zawada or Bonomi to make the play here in overtime. And of course, if you're Cornell, number 77, Gavin Adler, and a lot of pressure on Chase Earl and the netminder for what the Big Red. What did Connery tell us? He's got a lot of pieces here. A lot of different options that he has had to work with all year. Overtime. Next goal wins. Here's Thompson. Shoved out by Staub. Back at X. Bame. Aronson. He's got it. Forced out, back to the top of the box. Next goal is gonna send someone to the quarterfinals. Bonomi lofts it, stays here. Calling it a shot. Good defense by Cornell, lifting on number two. Bonomi's stick, sending it airborne. They've got 22 seconds to shoot. Thompson, back to Baim. Searching, Baim looking. Michael Bain finds Clay, the veteran to Thompson. Got it! Peter Thompson with the game winner in overtime. Hail to the victor, Michigan, in its first NCAA tournament. Not done making history yet. You took the words right out of my mouth. Mikey Bame used as a decoy. Dodging from behind the cage, he drew two slides. The second one gets the ball moving. And the old man, quote unquote, Bryce Clay, look at the cross cage feed to Thompson. Down low, ball watching by Cornell. The backdoor cut by number 29 in maize and blue, Peter Thompson, and he slots it past Chase Erlin. Michigan going to the quarterfinals. They are not done yet. What a lacrosse game. An inspired performance by these Wolverines. 12 years as a Division I program. Look at Thompson, the emotions, they are pouring out of him. 
He's the fifth year senior from Ann Arbor. A year ago, he was on the losing end of this thing. First round loss when he was at Georgetown to Udell, and, and here he is in his graduate season at Michigan. He tastes victory. We knew this was going to be a special game with special players. And Michigan, credit Kevin Connery and the confidence that he showed in Scott Beta. First play in overtime, Bame draws the slide, gets it to Aronson. I thought Aronson could have gone to the cooker, but instead he gets it out as Thompson in the middle. Look, look at that emotion. Just oh, so emotional. Wow. But what I love, Kevin, they went right back to that play. They went right back to Bame being the decoy. You've got to respect his speed and dodging ability. We saw him tie the, or take, give Michigan the lead toward the end of regulation. And you had to, and Cornell elected to send the very early slide. Bame unselfish, gets it over to Bryce Clay, and Clay sends it over to Thompson as we see Thompson and his offensive coordinator, Scott Bita embracing knowing that they punched their ticket to Albany. Oh, what a gutsy play. Here it is. Again, the cut, the backdoor cut by Thompson. He recognized his defender. Back in the old days with the back rack helmets, when you see the laces, that's when you cut. Now when you see that Cascade album, Kevin, you slip behind your defender. And Thompson made no mistake about it. Ball in his stick, high to high shot sending Michigan the historic season of the Wolverines continues. Oh my goodness, what a game. Overtime thriller. A contest in which Mark, neither team led by more than two goals. It was tight, competitive, compelling throughout. Fun, fun. You can say that again, <laughs> my friend. And so another seeded team is out. The defending national champs, plus the runners up from a year ago, erased out of the bracket. Michigan will wait the winner of the game that follows us. That is the number one seed to Duke Blue Devils and the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. Uh, any guesses uh, as to who our Capital One player of the game is? Peter Thompson, a game high, four goals. Three of them coming in the fourth quarter and overtime. Who was gonna step up for Ryan Cohen today? The absence of number 40 in maize and blue. 27 goals, 29 assists. I'll be your Huckleberry. Number 29, Peter Thompson. What an incredible performance by Thompson. And how about the goaltending of Hunter Taylor? A freshman with unbelievable saves, the biggest in overtime, allowing Michigan to get possession, call timeout, and set up what they wanted to run to get the game-winning goal. Thompson, the embrace with the family, an incredibly special moment for the Ann Arbor man. Hunter Taylor, his last two games, 30 saves. Unbelievable. A season over. You see the jubilation on one side, the despair, anguish on the other. Cornell in the title game a year ago, one of the premier teams of the nation this season. They fought their tails off for much of that second half, trailing by a goal or two for the majority of it. Forced overtime, but Michigan is marching on. We'll talk to Kevin Connery when we return.